set up the, <laughs> the CDM bridge. Yeah. Um, and then we are really probably not going to do this because there's just you know a small group. But talk about what kind of metadata remediation you can do. And then I will probably show you how Highbridge, um, as simple as it is, or I'll probably just hand it to you because you're. You, I can, I can do that. Yeah. So CDM bridge, y'all um, got that up and working. Almost just going to let them act uh, cool. let me install it. So we are actually going to. Um, it's the yarn command. I've just got the development version. It's a yarn command. That's the uh, Yarn dash. Yarn dash. Yeah. And that might cause an issue though. Cause didn't oh. someone else do that? Uh, Did it, um, Nick tried to do that. He was on the wrong version of Node. So if you have a bit of a heat. I had it running. If he had it running once before, I wouldn't try it. Oh, I did it. Yeah, because I didn't upgrade it. It broke it one time because it went up to two, two new versions of Node, right? Node 10 doesn't work. Node 10 doesn't work, yeah. yeah. But it looks like I've got some issues. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's some issues with the Electron framework that we have. They haven't updated yet. So once you open it, you should get a preferences, and we're going to be using an older uh, Utah server that they let us use. But if you want to use your own hosted server, the way to find it, unless if you already know your um, content DM number, then you can just plug it into this um, set of information. Is, is there really Personal question: how, how how easy is it to get the data I want to do? It's we're about to show you. Okay, easy. Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> easy enough where we can actually do it during the source show. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, what, is that once you've got permission to do that, or can anyone do that from their own instance? Or can they actually make a request to CLC and go through a bunch of hurdles? So this is the public API. Okay. That so far they haven't. Taking it down from us, we are ten. We are hoping and assuming people are going to, you know, good faith and only use their own, typically. Yeah, but the idea is that there's a, a public API you can use to make your own backups and that kind of thing, and then this one's for mm -hmm. they just don't have Yeah, and this is, I mean, it's it's a documented API that OCLC supports. Okay. Um, so for their hosted environment, there is no authentication to use it. You just um, plug in this information and. You're off and running. Um, for local installations, um, you might come across people that have firewalls that block that particular port or API calls. We at U of H actually do that, so uh, not anyone can just start pulling their data. That's what quite different people. <laughs> yeah. We just move from a local installation where you know, can different with the port number. Yeah. Or API. I was actually surprised when we moved to the host and service that it was still open. I thought sure they would walk it off. Yeah. Um, a bit surprised, but we're going to take advantage of it while it's the last. <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't want that to suddenly change after all this work. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, <laughs> then it's maybe at least documented that it worked while it can. So, again, um, we'll just go out of here and actually go to it. People are leaving content DM largely because it's just it's sort of like a long way out of date as a system. It's proprietary, they don't like their relationship. Um, I think some of it's proprietary. Um, like it is difficult actually, uh, even though we do have, we started to build these tools, there's no supported method through OCLC to actually get all of your data. Right. Um, so we must have had some institutions, including yourself, if you have large collections. Um, the built-in exports that is provided with the content, content DM is quite limiting, mm -hmm. and with, especially with large collections, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so we've had pretty good success of exporting data, um, and other institutions have exported data that they've never been able to export before. That's a good example of why API is much better because you can you can get out get things out consistently. You don't have to worry about getting 
taking a pile of garbage on the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sort of way through. The reason we're trying to get out of content today, like I said, we just moved from our, our local install to the hosted because they no longer support a local install. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that's U of H's issue too. So now that they don't allow local, there's no there's no one there if something breaks on their end. Yeah, there's, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, there's no official support anymore. I mean, we're still going to be running our local instance until we can finally get off of it, but uh, we, we haven't run across too many instances where we needed their support. So, so they're officially ending support of the product, essentially? Uh, for local winding. installs, yeah. Oh, I see. They, they keep you posted, they don't wind it down. Yeah, yeah. So right now they um, they were in the process, I don't know if they finished, but they were contacting all of their local uh, so, uh, clients and migrating them over to their hosted. Okay, right, so hopefully you will see the exact same collections that I am seeing on here, and it's yep. every collection that's at the Utah uh, instance. The things you can really do at um, with CDM Bridge, other than preferences, is you can change how the crosswalking map is going to look like. So if you do know that you are going to have a slightly different um, set of metadata fields than what the generic work is in Hyrax IQ, you can change it here. Uh, right now we just have it as the, the standard that's in IQ. And also if you're just playing around with your metadata and or just want to look at one instance, you can change this, you can add more, and then if you can reset it to go back to the, the standard. So when you say export field, those, those names are the uh, Standard high, high rex or high ones. Right, high rex IQ, the generic work has those. Okay, and then the CDM ones are correct. And then, yes, this will pick up all the fields that are within that collection on the CDM side. So, um, here are three. We looked at earlier, these are three that aren't going to kill their server or make you have too long of a wait. So, if you want to um, pick one of these, and actually go through and map it, and then do export collection and also uh, metadata and files. You can go ahead. Yeah, so you can make that bigger. Oh, you just have to do the, um, just do the required fields. Yeah, I mean, you can, you're more than welcome to do more. It's just kind of a, you know, there's no real difference. Um, I don't know the font. Okay, so map to creators. Yeah, so the generic work out of Haiku doesn't have a whole lot of required fields for it, um, as you can see. Uh, so, it's a weird, weird content game, for example, doesn't have a creator. Oh, uh, so there, no, there, I, that's right, I've already selected it. Sorry, I'm not thinking. So some of these, there are going to be different. Each collection can have its own metadata. So a few of these will not have creator, and you'll just either have to go in. You can go into the preferences and make it not required, right. or you can choose something that might work in that situation. Yeah. And this is the tricky part about mapping from content DM to you know something like Haiku. Like you just mentioned, hey, there's no keyword in content DM. There isn't. Um, but um, subject is usually what. Yeah, we we've, we've been using a lot of subject and. Or just description. Yeah, description is also pretty good. And the right statement. So in, in the other direction, if I need a field, uh, if we have a work type in Hyrax that has a field that's not in here, and we have to go into the code and hybrid set, there's no way in the interface right now. Uh, there is through the preferences, so the export. Oh, you shown there at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Added through there. Yeah, you can you can add those in there. Um, right now, we don't have any way to where if like you have multiple works, mm -hmm. you can't select you know, which, which which work you want. Uh, add them all. Yeah, you can add them all, and then as you export, you can just select that mapping, uh, or uh, you can go in there and just continue to 
you know, mess around with the export fields and send them every, every once in a while. What, what happens when you tend to get things like nested data? So first name, last name, uh, or get that sort of thing that all associated with names, for example. Do you have the ability to map from, say, a single name field to those? Or we do. So you can actually map multiple content name fields into oh, a single perfect. export field. Um, okay. Oh, so you just add another one? So you just add another one. So yeah, if you had something like first, middle, last, mm -hmm. then you would add in the first, the three first, middle, and last names and map them directly to mm -hmm. your one name's title. Five errors. So yeah, a lot of them either the typically creator is not used. I found, but so I will go ahead and do mine. Yeah, so we do have some validation going on. It's it's not real complex. It's just the first one is did you actually map all your part fields? Um, if not, then you just can't export it at all. It'll tell you, hey, you need to export this stuff. Uh, the other validation that we do is that as it's pulling data out, uh, it will then check to make sure that there is, if there's still a value in that required field, and that's what these errors kind of show, is that it allows you to see maybe the data that you have in your repository isn't complete. Um, and so it will spit out a nice little error log to tell you exactly what went wrong. And right now it's just missing data. So that means that your data in your repository just was incomplete when it actually came and pulled it out. Yeah. Right. So I did the Western Waters one and you can see that there's certain items don't have everything. And is there anything from the tool that you can use to sort of mitigate that by cleaning that up first or is it clean up after the fact? So the, this tool is probably um, best for helping you see those issues that you really can't see within content DM. Just keep running this over and again to the errors. Yes. That's the yeah. It really, it just kind of depends on everyone's, each institution's workflow with how they're going to update metadata is different, so. So you can actually take the, the spreadsheet and use here directly to the user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can either use this as a, a tool that you can go back into something like content DM and fix all your errors, or and I do um, not actually have, a, I don't have PowerPoint or anything on this computer to open the CSV. Oh, um, I just, Sorry, I put mine in. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, you'll see yeah, just the, that you'll see all the information and what's inside of it. Yeah, so you can uh, go into this file and add in all this data if you want to. Which, even in our institution, we've had um, kind of a mixture of things. So sometimes we'll actually run this as reports, mm -hmm. fix the data in the repository, and then export it again. So it's kind of like a one time. They'll do the report, put all the data in, then they'll just export it and fix it in the CSV file. If there's anything else that's kind of missing, but uh, there's all different kinds of ways of doing it. Doesn't make sense to go back and fix the source by just get your export from it again. Yeah, especially when you work with large collections in front of DM, uh, that's usually what people don't like to do. They don't like to go back and kind of do it sometimes and make those changes because uh, that can be quite difficult. Try to get out of front of DM in the first place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm warm. And we use the three like really small ones, but some of these I know will have thousands of files. I think we've actually had North Carolina. Um, did a test run with CDM Bridge, and they were looking at a quarter million tiles in uh, one of their collections. Yeah. yeah. And it was actually working. So this really is uh, just kind of depend on what your server speed is and what the server's going to do. The this is just a really really simple API puller. So, so. Content DM, we have our JPEG 2000s and all those images are pulled out, but those aren't the originals. And we don't have good records necessarily the originals are. I'm thinking now would be a good time to do that. Mm -hmm. So can you see like the possibility of maybe adding to the spreadsheet 
file name and the location to have another column so I can get that tip information stored when I put it in my so Do you want something like that? Is that a valid case? Or? I think that's exactly what U of H is going to do almost, right? So with this, this that CSV, you can just change the, go in and change whatever the file name is as long as that's within that um, folder. If you're using Highbridge, it's going to pull whatever's in there. So you are able to do that sort of remediation. And we've, I've looked at several content DMs and it's kind of all over the place. I've found, I think Milwaukee had it where every file was still 300 or 35 megabytes for every single like PDF, or not a TIFF, they were just huge. Mm -hmm. So it's really just how everyone's used their content. I guess one thing is that I just want the location information in the original put in there. So it would probably be a whole new column. Right. I'd still have the JPEGs and export them and import them back, but let's go ahead and document where the original TIFF images are. Mm -hmm. You could easily do that again in CSV, you just add another column. Um, or, you know, people use the location field pretty broadly, so it can even be that. And so, and so the tool has a, is it, is it all hardwired in the back end, the, the, the API calls to, to bring the data into a particular field, or do you have a way of doing that? Uh, the API calls are actually, they are encoded uh, in the code, um, but really um, the mapping is the only thing that does kind of make it unique. Uh, but it's still using those API calls and looking at those specific fields. Yeah. I was just thinking if you had another repository that had an open API, then how easy would it be to adapt it to that other system? Uh, that's what we are hoping to yeah. kind of dive into a little bit further down the road as we start looking at other uh, systems. Um, so yeah, right now, um, behind the scenes, this is pointing to a specific content DM file that has all of that, those classes um, kind of defined. So I imagine it would be fairly easy to go in and then just add in your own yeah. connector, right? um, but make it a little bit uh, more dynamic. You kind of architected it so you can see the points where people duplicate that, rename it. Yeah. It's, I've, I've started thinking that way. I've started coding it in that way. Um, but I just need to go back and really clean that up and finalize that kind of interaction. So we kind of talked through some of these. We talked about local files and how it would be good to either pull this data down and then switch it with the original files because of the triple IF we were within Hyrax that makes that. Um, remediation, one thing we found is that unless you already have your write statements in URI form, it's going to get a little fuzzy once you uh, ingest it. So this one remediation we would recommend in between um, CDM Bridge and iBridge is uh, switching your write statements to the URIs because Hyrax IQ will actually accept the URI and put it into what it already has there. And it's uh, Writes statements.org? Right, yeah. Right. They can actually can figure that out. Hmm? And that can be figured out. It felt to me like in saying whether it's copyright or in or out of copyright, must the right statement. It's just the, some of the, some people have their content DM, um, it'll be just a, like a sentence. Yeah. And you can change that sentence it's into the URI. Right. Just, yeah. This is probably one of the scariest fields. Yeah, and, and we've also kind of looked at other institutions and their copyrights um, and what they put into content DM, and it really is kind of all over the place. Um, it's pretty naive to say it's going to be worse for you, except it was a lot of surprises. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see if my big Do people tend to customize content DM quite a lot in terms of adding, you know, changing their base speakers and mm -hmm. having, you know, having endless variants that are, like one collection has has a field name, what the other one has one name, the same thing name slightly differently, etc. Uh, well, we have run across that before. Yeah, um, yeah in fact, even um, we uh, 
uh, U of H even went through a whole kind of metadata cleanup project that went on for I think two to three years uh, because uh, we were in an instance where we would have that, we would have like some metadata fields which kind of were similar but different. So um, that project was all about bringing in all of that stuff and making it more consistent uh, across collections. Um, even within collections sometimes. It's um, my big deal. Uh, so, um, yes it did. Not sure why. Yeah, it's nice how that worked. Did you ever consider just building, it was probably conceptual, so did you build that type of itself? Or would always be a separate tool? Um, so right now, this is a separate tool. There's also another tool that kind of is built into IP right now that the um, uh, University of Victoria builds called mm -hmm. CD and Migrator, okay. um, which they are also part of our project. Yeah. Um, so that is actually built in, they made it to where it's built in uh, IQ. Right. It does a lot of stuff that CD Bridge does right now. It's pulling in data out of Content PM mm -hmm. and then uh, allowing you to look at that CSV file and upload it again through that same interface okay. and update it. Um, we kind of, uh, we also did CD and Bridge for the, we, we wanted to get the best of both worlds for Especially for those people that, number one, didn't have a IQ instance to play around with and use. Um, also, allowing, um, we, can use, we can plug in my laptop to show up. Yeah, I think you should. That's fine. I don't know what's... Um, the, the other uh, option was is that, uh, of course, with any kind of uh, integration that comes out of IQ, is, you have a service provider that will also, you know, install those gems for you, for instance. Um, because the way that, that PyQ is built is kind of, once you make it available for one, you make it available for all. And mm -hmm. we thought, well, for those instances that that may not be what the providers want to do, mm -hmm. we wanted a way to still let people come in, look, pull their data out, and play around with it. So that's why we built this desktop application, which doesn't require Haiku at all. In fact, we haven't even touched Haiku at all yet. Um, not even in the export fields. That's hard-coded defaults uh, that you can change. Uh, so far, it's just the CDM bridge is yeah. ready for any, whatever you want to do with it. <clears throat> I've yet to find, but I, I imagine it might have digital humanities. Um, if someone wants all the metadata of a collection, they might be able to use it. Not quite sure why my vagrant <laughs> didn't work, but yours will. And it'll probably be faster and prettier in this. Well, this is on my laptop and my desktop, so. I'll need to export some of my VPN stuff first. That's all I need to do. Well, you can just do those three collections. The first. Also planning to do their high rents instance next year as soon as he isn't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I it's don't one know. of those where because the grant runs, we have to do this work too. Yeah, we've only just recently hired our second developer for the project. Um, so we're bringing him up to speed on everything.
you have you know, we have like uh, all the CDN institutions knocking on the door and asking? Not yet, because kind of uh, obviously you can't walk into the OCLC like uh, meetups and be like, hey, we have this thing that's going to pull your really stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, like UNC, they did it. And no, we didn't talk to them at all. They were like, hey, we've used this, and here's some things that are That's we cool. found that are broken. And we actually fixed a couple of their things. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, currently, it doesn't pull down the item level metadata, and a lot of people have okay. that. So I think that's the next. It looks like it does. Well, there's some, some people have it, so like the, the individual files under the object will also have metadata. Oh, I see. So it's right. So some of the collections are nice in one file, one object. Yeah, like here, yeah but there's other ones that will have, like books, will have one object and then 20. Yeah. And so next sprint we're going to be doing that. Maybe. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. What are we doing? At some <laughs> sprints, you're going to be doing the item level. Uh, yeah, at some point. Uh, it might be a couple. Maybe next month we'll be doing that for item level metadata. Is it just not plugged in yet? No, yeah, it's plugged in. My, my computer does not like the other house. No, it's not up to Yeah, no, that's good. Maybe. So that's really what you do on a connection by connection basis, at least because that means. Even if things are defined differently in each connection, have been done differently. You're at the tackling one at a time. Yeah. So there's not really any other way to do it, I guess. No, we we thought about having a like a default crosswalk as well, but it's it just doesn't wouldn't make much sense. As yeah, soon as every collection doesn't feel some yep. sort of Do they ever have like control vocabularies and things like that or uh, terminology lists? Um, that's, I think content theme allows some of it, but we that's not on. Not something you could pull those as well? Um, at that point, it just gets to be a much larger. Uh, yeah. just I just imagine that some, some institutions are on like research data, so you might have quite a lot of them. Well, you could, so I. We hope that people will just use OpenRefine once they've gotten the CSV out and they can use OpenRefine and you can use controlled vocabularies with that pretty easily. It's, uh, I don't know how to explain it, it's just this kind of great little, Google bought it and it kind of has kind of turned away from there, but it, it's just an easy way to do faceted uh, data browsing. Have you used OpenRefine? Yeah. It's a pretty easy way to either get, I think you can use controlled vocabularies through it, or you can just, it's one of those things that will tell you, hey, you have 20 instances of USA and 13 instances of United States of America. These should combine some way. Yeah. <laughs> so it does really nice faceted browsing, and it, yeah, it's good for data, remedi uh, data remediation or just getting, you can look at your data in a way that it's not usually easy on itself. But otherwise someone would have to go and they'd have to find another way of getting the vocabulary that we're using out of people was custom on it. Right. I do I know I'm not expecting an API to give you that really so Yeah, I don't know how that I know that uh, Georgia State I, I don't know if any of them are here, but they've been questioning authority as a Ruby gem that sometimes will help that can be placed into um, I don't know if it can be placed perfectly into high racks, but it will help use uh, control vocabularies pretty easily. Can't you just like boot up a PC machine? No, I can't even uh, get my display over. I 
let's just walk over and look at your screen, right? We'll just do that, I think. <laughs> It'll go to the front table. Uh, I mean, I've had yeah. the, the readme on the Sean's GitHub with the Vagrant will work. If you, I don't know why my machine decided to not work today, but it's. Because it's here in a workshop. Yeah, but I, um, at, at work, at my office, I bring up the Vagrant almost twice a week testing stuff, so it's a pretty straightforward, you just have to do the high queue stuff where you create the super admin, and then. I've done it without the Vagrant scratch. Okay. Success. For the high bridge, or just, cool. Yeah, we. For us, the frustration lately has been Image Magic doesn't like the JPEG 2000, so we've had to. And that might just be with your. Is that just with your Vagrant stack, or is it Image Magic in general? Uh, that's just with my Vagrant instance. Okay. I'm just trying to get Image Magic working in an automated way is a little bit of a. That makes me think of you also, do you have any plans to add any transformation capability into it? No. So that would be something someone would use a separate tool for. Like open refine. Um, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to do anything, we don't want to make the CDM bridge too crazy. Yeah. We think it's good just to pull out your data and people find no ways that they want to work with their CSVs. Um, you know, once within hopefully we do more workshops and there's people that say they this is the thing they always do with their data it's just hard because you don't know where everyone is yeah. like u of h has been doing metadata remediation for two or three years now you're about to do a bunch of it some people it's just you know since they have legacy system where they have like a bunch they know they need to deal with and then they have the last year or so is good it's just it's hard to make something that would work at a broad level. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, people might have things that they want to migrate in the images to a format, or they might want to do that with the JPEG 2000 or something. Yeah, that's... But that's just a bit of That was kind of outside the, the grant. The grant yeah, really no, is just trying to <laughs> have the most simple workflow possible. Yeah, I wasn't thinking the simplest word. And, and do you have any plans for to, to modify the, the import functionality of Python? Um, that? We are hoping that the like the consortia that have decided to use Haiku, mm -hmm. we want to obviously listen to what they are planning to do. Mm -hmm. We will have the gem ready for them to use if they want to. Um, <clears throat> that, that works kind of starting now. Right. So we we'll think we'll be able to import the ebrins. Mm -hmm. So it's always a good time to see if we can use what what you've output. Mm -hmm. yeah, so and cool. we're going to be doing our the, the TDL pilot, which is actually going to be hosted by TDL. So it'll have there's no virtual machine or anything. It's going to be actually running a Haiku through the motions of having you know 200 gigabytes of files, which I don't know how many people have actually done that yet with Haiku. Oh, yeah. Even when even the pilots that the Hydra in a Box had, or that we've had last, I guess this spring with TDL, it was just, since there was no batch import yet, you know, you were adding, you might be adding 20 files and then be like, okay, I've done my tests. <laughs> so finally getting to... We're getting there too, but mm -hmm. we're going to be doing that with the National Museum of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Some similar types of volume. Yeah. And also the, <clears throat> it's hard to know how much customization per each client people will be able to do with Haiku really yet. So we don't, we're just supposed to have some sort of import tool which we've created. We don't, we're not sure how much. What's the kind of thing, the, the other end you're going to have to map it to exactly what kind of work type template you put right. together. And some, some people have a different one. Right. So customized those, so then there'll, be, there'll have to be some mapping on the Haiku side. Right. Even from what comes out of standard. And that's just, I mean, you go to that preferences and you could change it to what, if you know some collections have some. If we find that, like over the winter, that a lot of people, a lot of the consortia are going to want to have different types of uh, work, we will maybe have CDM Bridge do something. Mm -hmm. But we just don't know. If we do it to stay in touch. 
Oh. Right now, if I'm doing an ingest, it has to go in as a single word type for every item? Or is there sort of a field? It's, well, HiQ has it out of the box, only has generic work. Um, there's image there, but image only has one field extra, which is extent, and it doesn't actually do anything. We've added about another eight words now. And that, they don't yeah. the, in the main But we, as it now stands, I don't know if there is, since we have, since we're just kind of using IQ as it is out of the box, we don't know what is required to, to flag something as a different type of work in, in ingest. Right. Okay. Yeah. And they're soon, or if you want to see it, see it since this has been. Because I don't know if we're going to be doing. No, isn't Raven doing that as part of the pilot? So yeah, there is some work of seeing about. Uh, I don't know if it's just Raven doing that, but there is some work being done to make creating the different works a little bit easier, yeah. and of course, edit it, editing the metadata that's yeah. uh, needed for each work. Right, right now it's very basic, and that's what we're going after right now. But one thing we found is we did have to start modifying the, the data model. The is that the, are you, is one of your coworkers the Dog Biscuits gem? I don't think so. I'm not sure there. I, I, I wouldn't actually know. Okay, there's someone, I, I was looking at the poster presentations. Oh, no, we don't, we don't have anything here. And one of the posters is called, is for a Dog Biscuit? It's called the Ruby. It's the Ruby Gems name, and it apparently helps with creating um, work types. It could so, be, could be for someone not J. I thought she was six. Sector eight, not oh. J. Oh, yeah, co-sector. Yeah, yeah co-sector. Yeah. So, yeah. It's yeah, so a are in touch with them. Mm -hmm. They're located close to our table. Right. Yeah. We definitely want that. We, yeah. want, we want people to have a you know, browse library of mm -hmm. templates and mm -hmm. choose and modify them. So, but then, of course, that. Of yeah, I don't know how you would flag, because then you would have to go in to the works. You would have to go in and manually say what you want the objects to be, unless you know that one collection is all movies or all PDFs. That is interesting. But it would be almost, I, I don't know. Yeah, you have to say map, map this type to that, but do you... Do you actually, when, when you export an object, do you actually say what type of thing it is? No, we're just using the, it's just all uh, the generic work. But if something was exported, there was a, a book, mm -hmm. and nothing was exported, there was an image, would you be able to tell from the export, or they were in one collection? Um, well, you would be telling from the file type. Yeah. That would be the only Maybe. real reason. There wouldn't be a... Well, it could be a journal article the book with the PDFs. If, if you have something in your... If you just use the format, I guess, format use, uh, field would probably be the thing that you would have that in. Okay. Whatever metadata field it, you have, what type it is, that would be there. Yeah. But that doesn't really map to anything. That doesn't map to a work type yet yeah. in Haiku. So mapping to work type would be a task. Yeah. Yeah, even ContentDM, they have this notion of compound objects, mm -hmm. uh, which are kind of nested. Um, but that still is like they have their the main object, and then they have what are called pages that are attached to that compound object. Um, and our export creates that ob that top object level as a work, uh, and then all the pages um, that come out of Content DM. So in this case, like book would be your your uh, high level compound object, uh, and it would be the work. Uh, in, the, in our case, a generic work, and then all the pages of that book would be of the, the file set types. Um, and um, as we said, that uh, that item level, that page level metadata, uh, we'll be working on to get that uh, out of content DM and into the CSV file. So can I mention blockchain? Nothing in support is generic. They wouldn't have been generic works in the original repository. Yeah, no, yeah, no, they wouldn't. Um, but that's also, like, we're, of course, trying to gather that kind of information. Yeah. Like, what what do we do when someone doesn't support the generic work? Um, now, I just, yeah, I 
I mean, you've got your analysis of those books, uh, conference reports, and things in the in your original repository. You're always going to want to have the same stuff in the other. So I did throw them out before. Yeah, and, and those are kind of the the things right right now as it stands. What you would have to do is um, you can of course create like a book work or whatever works you need within your repository. Uh, you can modify the export fields to match that work that you have. Export all of your data, uh, and then within the CSV file, there it actually labels it as a generic work. But you can find and replace all of those to book work. Just being updated. Right? Yeah, just and then when you import it, it will pick up that work within Haiku and ingest it as a as whatever work as a book work. So that's already possible. You're saying. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, you can do that now. Yeah. Uh, it's just not a clean way of doing right, it. Right. Right. I mean, you run a script against your CSV and, like you say, find the file type as a uh, MPEG in it and make this a video. Yeah. It's so, always yeah. you, yeah. I can imagine a huge variety of PDF and you know, source of PDF. But yeah, the only thing you can't do right now is, like, the um, the importer does not understand, like, right now within Hyrax, you can do, uh, you can have works within works, yeah. right? Um, so it doesn't under, the importer or CDM bridge doesn't understand that notion that you can have works within works. It's just your work and a file set. Uh, well, what I've tried it so far, I haven't figured it out yet, and I'm sure I've probably missed something. I want, like, this whole pack of ingest that I created to go into one collection. How do you shoot it at the collection? We've not yet found that, but it is pretty easy if you're within Haiku to just grab things and put them into a collection pretty I'm thinking, you know, yeah. thousands and thousands of items that get imported once. Yeah, as far as like selecting the collection, that's on our list of features to do that. But right now there isn't. Um, we're still trying to figure out like where do we do it? Do we do that within CDM bridge? Do we do that in the CSV? Do we do it as part as during the ingest? Do you go and select your collection? Uh, that would make, to me, make more sense at the ingest level. So the collection name may change or whatever, so that would be the time to yeah. see everything in this batch. Stuff that's not in that collection can pull out of that batch. Uh, what was the uh, collection? Haiku wasn't as set up as I was. <laughs> um, I used the one. Uh, which one did y'all use? Yeah. I think the Park City. Park City? Okay. Yeah, Park City. Park City Historic Society or something? Is that one? Did one of y'all do the Park City? Park City Historical Society. Yeah, and yeah. Yep, that was one. Okay. Uh, and the uh, export. Cool. That. I guess so you're just going to walk it over to them? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's we we're thinking of. That's the one UI that I thought was pretty rough. He's not knowing or oh, use tool, so he's been playing around. with works. Try to feel with uh, <laughs> with some way of knowing beforehand what either the file size of the collection or the number yeah, something amazing. something that lets you know before you hit export that yeah. it's large. But there's no the APIs are a little rough on. File size, right? Yeah, they're only uh, not necessarily rough, but I have to grab all the metadata fields from every level, like including item level. Uh, so the export takes a little bit longer because I'm making additional calls to get that information. But uh, in the end, I think it's works pretty well. I've only done the uh, uh, CSV and files. 
you do just a CSV, will it go pull the image from the content you suggest, or is it just not? No. No. Yeah, it just does the CSV portion of it. So it will grab all the metadata. It will still show all the files in the CSV, but it will not pull the files out. Yeah. Just give you a location. Yeah. yeah.